So a month ago, I visited SeaWorld Abu Dhabi in the United Arab Emirates. And today I'm back to the first SeaWorld park I visited, and in my opinion, the better one when it comes to rides. Now this is SeaWorld Orlando, where we are going to explore all the incredible coasters again, including two coasters I never did so far. So let's make it an amazing day here. In 2017, I visited Orlando for the last time and since then a lot has changed. Every park in this theme park capital has invested in new rides and experiences and after six and a half years, I'm back to explore them all. Today we're visiting a park with some amazing roller coasters as we're going to explore SeaWorld Orlando. Alright, so here we are again in SeaWorld Orlando. I visited this park back in 2013 and 2017 and I always loved this park so much. So there are some really fun rides here. And since my last visit, a lot were added actually, like for example Pipeline and uh, Icebreaker and such, but more on that later. Now the entrance area of SeaWorld here is not really world class or highly themed compared to some other parks here in Orlando. Uh, but that is not the reason to visit this park, actually. SeaWorld is part of SeaWorld uh, Parks and Entertainment together with Busch Gardens and is more uh, focused on an amazing ride offering combined with some theming, but not like complete storytelling and such. It's uh, somewhere between a Disney or Universal Park and a Six Flags Park, actually, when it comes to rides and immersion. Now, very different from uh, SeaWorld in Abu Dhabi as that park is not that much focused on rides and a lot more on theming. But anyway, now entrance to SeaWorld will cost you around $157 for one day, but you can also get a two-park ticket uh, to visit both SeaWorld here as Aquatica, the water park right next door, or Bush Gardens in Tampa. And get your tickets online, folks, as you will get a discount there for sure. Now access to this park is also very easy. It has a big parking lot. Uh, right next to it and right next to the highway also so if you have difficulty getting here then you're probably doing something wrong but anyway as said earlier we're here to do some rides some amazing rides so let's get ourselves to the first one already and that is uh this roller coaster we see in front of us already which is manta now this coaster was my first flying coaster uh, back in 2013 and still one of my favorite ones it's a flying coaster from PNM which opened in 2009 it's a pretty intense one actually compared to for example Fly at Fantasialand which is a Vekoma flying coaster. Now Manta is not as immersive as Fly but it's really a great ride with the highlights being the fact it's 43 meters high, four inversions along the ride from which one is a really forceful uh, pretzel loop which is something pretty unique for BNM flying coasters. So you can imagine I'm looking forward to this again. So let's go.
so meant uh, I'm still in love with this one actually it's such a cool and powerful flying coaster especially the pretzel loop the, the most intense loop I ever experienced so far it just feels so unnatural especially in the flying position and such that makes BNM flying coaster it's just so unique and fun to ride also the interactions with the water here and the waterfalls towards the, towards the end is nicely done it's, it's it's definitely not as immersive as fly like i said before but i just love this coaster without any doubt as it's much more powerful and intense than fly and it's it's just such a good bnm flying coaster so after that flying coaster let's go search for atlantis on this water coaster here okay no we're not going to do that because it's closed actually today <laughs> doesn't matter uh, it was the very first uh, water coaster from mac constructed in 1998 now this ride here is a pretty big one compared to the other Journey to Atlantis rides in other SeaWorld parks and it houses a cool dark ride section actually there in the, in the big building there and two, it has also uh, two drops, uh, first one being here which you can see and the second one uh, after the dark ride section. Um, so yeah, I, it's a bit of a shame this one is closed because it's a very fun one actually but yeah, I guess we'll have to do it. Uh, the next time we're here in SeaWorld Orlando, there are still a lot of other cool uh, roller coasters, so it's not that much of a shame. But anyway, if you're here and it's open, do it because it's a very fun one. Now, and from that water coaster, uh, let's get to the next roller coaster here, as this park also uh, houses a lot of uh, roller coasters, like I said. Kraken is up next, it's another BM coaster, but this time a floorless coaster actually. It's the oldest BM coaster here in this park, and it has been at SeaWorld Orlando since 2000. It's uh, 45 meters high, but we, you don't really see uh, the, the lift hill here at this moment, maybe after entering. Yeah, there you see the lift hill a bit. So it's uh, 45 meters long, uh, high. It features seven incredible inversions, and it's with a length of uh, one kilometer and 200 meters, also a pretty long one. Now, last time I visited uh, the park, Kraken was closed because uh, we were refurbishing it to add the VR experience to it, which was Kraken Unleashed. That lasted only for one year, so it's almost 11 years ago actually since I wrote this one. So you can imagine I'm really stoked to get on it again, so uh, let's do it.
Okay, so Kraken here behind me, it's not my favorite ride in this park, but I already had that feeling actually 11 years ago, uh, but now it just has been confirmed. It's just a bit shaky, it's not really smooth, you can definitely feel it's an older one. Now, I didn't bang my head, so I, it was doable, but there are better and smoother coasters in Orlando for sure, even some older rides, but so yeah. All right, and from the oldest BNM coaster in the park, let's get to the newest BNM coaster here, but it's still under construction. As you can see, Penguin Track here will be a BNM family coaster opening later this year, and it will be the first of its kind as BNM has never built a family coaster before. So I'm very curious how this one will turn out, but that will be for my next visit to Orlando, unfortunately. So as Penguin Track is not open yet, let's get to another BNM coaster that is open. I know this park feels like BNM Paradise as the next one is Mako, a BNM Hyper Coaster from 2016. Now the ride has no inversions and it's very much like a yeah, very Silver Star like, but better. It's, it's not as high as Silver Star in Europa Park, but with a height of 61 meters, it still is a lot of fun actually. So uh, let's find the entrance and get on this uh, amazing Hypercoaster. Okay, so Mako, it's still a great BNM hyper coaster. It's quite a recent one, actually, of course. So it's still pretty smooth, uh, but it also has just a fun layout with a lot of floater airtime and uh, the fun bank turns at the end here. It's not too intense, so it's not very thrilling, but it's just very, very fun, actually. Now, and from this amazing coaster, let's get to a ride here, yeah, which I didn't try out uh, last time yet because it wasn't here yet. Uh, this is Infinity Falls. Uh, the rapid river ride that seems to be pretty soaking wet so we'll have to see <laughs> so fun fact this rapid river ride opened in 2018 with the tallest drop on a rapid river ride 
uh, back then. I'm not sure if that's still the case, but anyway, I'm going to put my poncho on and challenge the water. Okay, so Infinity Falls, now this is a ride you have to do if you like really wet uh, water rides actually. It's such a fun uh, rapid river, it has no dull moments and it's soaking wet if you're not wearing a poncho, uh, luckily I was. Now the elevator and the drop you see here uh, behind me, that is just uh, really, really fun. It's not very fast when you're in the boat itself, but uh, yeah, if you're in the wrong seat it creates a huge waves or if you're in the wrong seat you're in for a treat for sure. Okay, that was the only water ride of today here at SeaWorld, so let's get ourselves to the next ride, which is somewhere on our right here. Ah, there it is. This is a kitty coaster and one I actually never did before. It's Super Grover's Boxcar Derby here in the Sesame Street area. Now this is a Zenith Force 3 coaster and actually the only Force 3 model in the world. And the ride opened in 2006 and used to be Shamu Express till 2018 when this area was redeemed to uh, Sesame Street, just like the similar area they have in Bush Gardens, for example, in Tampa. Now, I'm obviously not the target audience for this ride. I didn't uh, do this uh, one, uh, I didn't do this one uh, the two times I visited SeaWorld here. But as I am here again, why not give it a try, actually? Okay, so Super Grover, I'm not sure why they call these rides Force 3 as it absolutely has no force to it. It's just a dull kiddie coaster, but it's fun for kids for sure. But this one is kind of shaky in my opinion. You definitely feel it's an older one. But anyway, we tried it. It's good for once.
Okay, now it's time for the first of two roller coasters that were not in the park yet last time I visited. And first one is Icebreaker, a premier Skyrocket roller coaster from 2022. Now this ride is a custom layout featuring a swing launch reaching a speed of 84 kilometers per hour with a 100 degree spike which we can see here behind uh, the tree. Wait one second, where is the spike? It's a bit hidden. There is a spike, so a uh, 100 degree spike here, which is also called a Junior uh, Scorpion Tail. It doesn't look like the best themed ride here, but apparently it's a pretty fun one, so let's ride it. Okay, and with that we rode another great coaster, it, it, it's not themed at all, but it's just a ride itself, it's just a lot of fun. Uh, the launches are not that spectacular, as is the spike, it doesn't do much, but there's just a lot of air time on, especially on the last launch, right before you go up that top hat. I was really amazed by the, the amount of air time there at that moment. And the rest of the layout is also just really nice, it's a lot of fun. Uh, it's nice to see something different compared to many other Skyrocket 2s in the world, for example, like Skyscream, Tigris or Eel Racer for example, so it's, it's nice to have something different here, but it's, it's not as powerful as I expected it to be, but it's just a really fun, really fun power, uh, premier ride, uh, Skyrocket Sky Coaster. Okay, and after that premier ride coaster, let's get to the newest ride in the park here, which is another B&M roller coaster, Pipeline the Surf Coaster. Now this BNM coaster from 2023 is a first of its kind new generation of stand-up coaster with some cool trains bouncing uh, with the airtime hills. So I'm really curious to see if this is just a gimmick or if that really adds to the experience actually. Anyway, the rides feature some airtime moments uh, like for example here uh, on the launch. Uh, it also uh, features a one inversion which is right there. And uh, for, yeah, for the rest it just looks pretty cool and pretty fun actually, so let's check it out.
Okay, that was such a weird experience. Let me say this first already, the bouncing seat is not a gimmick for sure. It's really, it's working really well. And on every airtime moment throughout the ride, the seats really make you yeah, fly upwards actually. It's weird to be standing on a roller coaster already, but being lifted upwards like that at every airtime moment, not being uh, with my feet on the train anymore was just really weird actually, but, but it's so much fun. They, they build an incredible coaster here. It's a fun ride system, comfortable seats, uh, surprisingly smooth and also a lot of airtime. It's just really, really a good one. Okay, so with that, we not only rode the newest roller coaster in the park, we also rode the last coaster in this park. Now this park is a bit bizarre. You can visit SeaWorld for the animals, or you can visit the park for the coasters. Now, if you want something else, you're in for a disappointment because there is, yeah, there is no trail rides. There is not a lot of flat rides and such. So to me, it feels a bit like a, a bit of a wrong balance when you solely look at the rides part. But let's hope one day SeaWorld will go in a different direction and will bring more rides in the park, which are not roller coasters. I mean, look at Animal Kingdom or Bush Gardens. They have a mix of animals and theme park rides, but it's not just roller coasters. Okay, I admit they had rides here, other kind of rides than roller coasters, but they removed them. Uh, and those rides uh, SeaWorld had were not really world class, such as Empire of the Penguin or Wild Arctic. But that doesn't mean that in the future they, there can't be a, a good other ride being added. But anyway, the coasters they have here are all really good. Manta is a really intense but good flying coaster. Mako is a really amazing hyper coaster with a lot of airtime. Icebreaker is a really fun uh, launch coaster. Or Pipeline, of course, is an amazing new stand-up coaster here behind me with such a fun train, actually. So overall, for a roller coaster enthusiast, this park is really like a great place to spend your day. Now we're off to the next adventure. See you in the next video. See ya!